Hello and welcome back to another guide for Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at the strategy layer of the game, so everything outside of combat. My guides are concise and to the point, so I hope in 10 minutes or less I can give you a full overview about everything that is needed to know. So let's start with the star map right away. In Chaos Gate you do have a star map and the star map when you are beginning the game uh, will consist of a very small array of around I would say give and take 15 stars. As the game progresses it will uh, grow bigger and bigger to this point here in the very end game. Um, as the star map grows uh, the problem still remains the very same. Uh, there will be events where so-called Bloom is going to spawn as in the minions of Nurgle are trying uh, to take over certain stars. Uh, what is important to know are a couple of uh, things here. Number one, whenever uh, Bloom spawns there can be three to four different Bloom spawns on parallel in, on the map. You are supposed to take care of at least one of them. If you do have enough movement speed you can take two, um, sometimes even three of them at the same time. Uh, in terms of spawn, uh, the spawn mechanic always includes uh, that the closest one at best can spawn one blip away from you realistically rather two blips away and the other two oft oftentimes um, algorithmically will be placed randomly on the other corners of uh, the system so much so that you can at best uh, mm, uh, basically combat two out of three. So first tip here is uh, if you're playing with Grandmaster mode just make sure that you uh, try to take the most optimal route. If you're uh, playing with a safe game you might want to save optimize as in um, uh, safe scum in order to get the locations where you want them to be. Second info around the bloom is the bloom is unproblematic <clears throat> unless one of two things is happening. Uh, number one the biggest problem with the bloom is when the bloom counter reaches five there is a chance that a so-called morbus gate is being spawned you do have five morbus gates until the game ultimately decides that you have lost you should prioritize the morbus gate missions and the tip uh, from my end therefore would be try to find yourself in the more or less middle uh, maybe gravitating towards whatever edge of the map is having more bloom so that uh, the areas with five uh, bloom can be covered easily. In order to offset five bloom there are only two ways. You either do the Morbus Gate missions as and when they come up or secondly you fly there and you do an Exterminators. Exterminators uh, as an option can be found under the uh, defense uh, systems. You can either uh, create a one-time Exterminators as a quick uh, one or a little bit cheaper but 14 days exterminators. In both cases what is going to happen is uh, the planet will be wiped out uh, clean out of uh, the um, infestation but as a result your um, uh, prognosticars will also be taken away from uh, the planet uh, permanently so so any uh, adjacent prognostica will essentially be taken away the second big event that you should look out for is bloom spreading you can see that uh, with the lines of bloom that are happening from a system which basically will infect uh, the next uh, systems so in this case this bloom spawn here it basically infects all of those five systems. What you want to um, achieve is a somewhat neutral if not net negative bloom uh, value. Uh, later in the game uh, there can be two to three dots even in bloom and you want to take missions in a way so that uh, the overall bloom uh, never really grows too much. You can see I am almost at day 2000 in this campaign. No Morbus Gate has uh, opened up and yes there is bloom but it is very much manageable. Good. So much for the bloom um, which nicely leads us to the next topic, the prognosticars. Talking about the prognosticars. Uh, prognosticars are one of the most important systems to update in your ship. The Ojorium allows psychically active characters on the ship uh, to basically predict certain events that are happening called prognosticars uh, which are system wide uh, installations. Uh, you will get over the uh, period of the entire campaign um, uh, five of these prognosticas, just uh, basically starting with um, one, 
then get one for every upgrade and then uh, you get two for the latest upgrade. What does that mean in terms of um, actual gameplay? When you are installing a prognosticar on a certain planet, that planet will get minus two corruption level. Uh, you now get the option to detect enemies on missions, uh, minus 15 warp surge, but uh, the most important part is the deadline is increased by three days. Everything else is nice, but that is uh, the big part. Now, if you align your prognosticas uh, correctly, all of the adjust uh, adjacent uh, systems will be affected by them and if you choose an efficient allocation across uh, the system you can uh, create an allocation where only two planets are not affected by the prognostic cars in order to do that uh, i suggest uh, in the original uh, map you're starting with ferrogar 4 which is kind of a natural choice because uh, they do have the most adjacent uh, systems and then once the map expands uh, you can kind of can uh, deduct it uh, from there. I was uh, going through this not knowing that I uh, will choose the optimal uh, location automatically by default but if you are looking at uh, the uh, different placements kind of in stars near that outer layer without directly being at the outer layer, you can uh, place them very, very efficiently, so much so that almost all of the stars are being captured. The prognostic cars are important because um, in order to contain the bloom and basically keep on going in the game, you want to reach missions in time. And there are two ways of doing that. Number one, you can extend the mission time, which is why you do have prognostic cars. And number two, you want to increase your warp speed or warp drive. Uh, warp drive uh, gives you three installments of plus 20% ship speed and requires uh, the respective plasma generator output in order to do that. And that nicely segues into how should you upgrade your ship. In my humble opinion, by far the most important upgrade is speed so that you can uh, reach each of the missions uh, without any problem. If I was to play the game again from the get-go I would potentially uh, focus on getting an Ojorium uh, first uh, then the plasma reactor and the warp drive respectively and I would uh, get the enhanced uh, Geller field as well because at the beginning of the game um, you are going to take the only damage that your ship is ever going to take to its hull is by warp storms and uh, the warp storm risk is minimized if you do have an enhanced Geller field so those I would call S tier priority items then we move on to A tier for me one of the A tier here items uh, or priorities is the regeneration unit one it is very likely that uh, your characters will take damage in the game specifically on higher difficulties and the 50 percent recovery speed doesn't look like much but it is an absolute game changer it will change uh, the recovery from uh, almost non-existent to very very good the second uh, topic that i would put under a category simply because of uh, necessity is the capacity <clears throat> of the barracks which I would increase by one so both of those would be a uh, mm, priority the last a priority that I would uh, suggest is one in, uh, upgrade of void shields you are starting with a hull integrity of three and once the hull integrity reaches zero it is game over you're losing uh, moving from three to four is a very substantial 33 percent increase in the uh, hull integrity and will give you more leeway so those i would um, upgrade after um, the general upgrade which kind of brings me to b tier or then kind of nice to have upgrades once uh, th that is done um, uh, in B tier, I would uh, suggest getting relatively soon, whenever it's available, uh, the um, uh, augmentation chamber, which continues to create uh, servitors. It's not that great of a servitor generation. Um, in uh, the perfect or f f final upgrade version, it gains uh, one servitor per f five days. The majority of your servitors will come from the missions that you are doing. Later missions uh, yield up to 30 servitors. Just to put that into context, that would be an equivalent of 150 days. But the augmentation chamber nonetheless just keeps uh, a steady supply of servitors so that you can repair if needed. Therefore, B tier and uh, put it in whenever 
industry you do have basically a very low amount of servitors but a lot of build time then this here is um, the uh, correct uh, selection uh, the other b tier would be potentially finalizing uh, the barracks as well as the void shields i personally like to play with uh, six hull integrity because it makes the game uh, much more easy then c tier um, anything that uh, you do afterwards for me gun batteries would be the next uh, thing on the priority list enemy ships that you're encountering later in the game will have a gun battery level and basically the game pitches your gun battery level against theirs typical gun battery levels of enemy cruisers start at gun battery level two later and go up to three i've never seen uh, one with four meaning if you upgrade it all the way to four you do have the upper hand and if you outclass the ship by two there is a high likelihood that if you do open fire uh, that you're not taking any hull integrity uh, damage so that is in in my perspective uh, worth it anything else that i have not mentioned specifically the faster construction speed on legendary doesn't really do um, a lot because it costs too much uh, uh, too many uh, servitors the um, libris um, research upgrade isn't really worth it on legendary because at the time when you have done everything else you have enough grimoires that do the exact same thing for you exterminators uh, niche you shouldn't be uh, needing those if you are doing the missions correct uh, correctly and then uh, personally the meditation chamber never really uh, did a huge difference for me simply because later in the game you get uh, high support uh, where basically your grand marshal uh, gives you 100% XP uh, off the bat so he gifts you an equivalent of these two meditation chambers and although the last one gives you uh, another 100% so that in the very end you end up with 300% 200 from the meditation chamber and 100 from uh, the high support really you don't need it uh, my uh, marines um, Space Marines were kept out very, very early and couldn't get any more experience. So if anything, this is uh, optimizing the fun out of uh, the game for you. The Apothecarium um, is a bit of a double-edged sword. Stasis Chamber is a very uh, controversial design. Uh, Fallen Brothers, to use them as, um, as uh, ability points, is not a very good concept to begin with and if you're playing well this will add zero benefit to your game same with the surgical uh, unit so that's really it in terms of building which kind of brings us uh, to the last part uh, the research menu and research in general all right so research in general i um, am a big fan of a couple of i would call it highlights um, for starters the very first two rows are the only thing that is available until you basically uh, research the source of the bloom it just so happened that in my uh, playthrough i researched all of that before going to the uh, search of the bloom and uh, the source of the bloom and i would almost recommend you to do a similar approach so a couple of highlights at the beginning of the game um, i personally like the seed for the extra um, uh, uh, requisition and then uh, the advanced seed simply that because you get extractor server skulls and you will get a very solid amount of uh, seeds with that makes it super easy to get the seeds and incredibly helpful the second uh, very very nice uh, uh, passive bonus is tides of escalation giving you warp points back on warp searches uh, will points back on warp searches so that is a very steady uh, route thirdly um, as the priority i liked uh, the whole bloom suppression uh, chains so all the way down to 15 percent but at the beginning it is five percent in terms of stratagems my personal favorite in the first tier is gate of infinity I would uh, start there and take it uh, from there. Very, very uh, strong uh, gem, uh, followed by Strength of Spirit, uh, which is a staple until until the very late end game. It is funny to see that some of the first stratagems that you are getting are actually amongst the strongest. A few more highlights as you are progressing through the uh, through the research tree. One of the things that I like. 
uh, were the reflective insights one and two which just gives you an extra stratagem uh, usage um, and uh, the enhanced focus which basically gives you an extra stratagem slot so those three for obvious reasons since they are passive bony um, will uh, give you a lot of uh, bang for the buck the second one would be the bloom suppression minus 15 percent is very noticeable later in uh, the game uh, the third one would be all of uh, the seals <clears throat> starting with the green purity seals but then all of uh, these seals yield you just such an advantage in upgrading your equipment more efficiently anything else that i haven't mentioned here is still fine but i wouldn't consider it to be absolutely mandatory a couple of the stratagems are fine and i'll go through them in my equipment guide so with research in general i would say take your time this game doesn't rush you through it the quote-unquote doom timer of um, a bloom overload in the star map can be easily manipulated and uh, circumvented by you just being fast enough and doing enough missions that leads to more loot that leads to more requisition that leads to more experience and ultimately it, if you're doing the missions well uh, the uh, strategy layer isn't that much of an issue however i will say that i will uh, give you a cautionous outlook uh, the most campaigns that i heard of uh, failed on the strategy layer and the single most important uh, failure there was the loss of hull integrity um, uh, so being too reckless and therefore running into uh, into problems which means if I can give you a parting tip in this guide, make sure that your hull integrity stays up uh, very healthy. I would never like to drop it below two. Um, in an optimal case, keep it at three or four. Uh, therefore, invest in it. And the second tip that I would have is make sure that you're um, taking care of the bloom. A little pro tip on that matter. I mentioned that the bloom is spawning at least one field uh, or one blip away from you. If your ship is in transit between two points then it counts as uh, being in neither meaning if you are for instance moving from here to here um, a bloom mission could spawn here or could spawn here giving you that little extra edge uh, that you need so if you're continuously like flying between two systems that'll make it more likely for you that the closest mission that spawns is actually going to be right next to you therefore giving you more time to reach the other missions so that's all i had for the strategy guide let me know if i nailed it and if that was uh, helpful for you and see you in one of my other warhammer 40 k chaos gate guides thanks a lot have a good one and bye bye